Hello everyone, this is Sam Spain and welcome to another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 series update. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about anonymous functions. I want to start by pointing out two facts. The first is that you can pass a function as an argument to a function. The second is that one of the ways to create a function is the following. Function, parentheses, open brackets, whatever you want the function to do, close brackets. So what would happen if you combined these two facts together? Well, let's see. So here we have the first thing that we talked about, main function, where you're passing in a function as an argument. And this would be a function that has already been created. Perhaps it's a script function, or maybe it's a method variable. But you can actually create a function at the same time that you're passing it in as an argument. So here you can see we have the main function, and then for its argument, we have function, open parentheses, close parentheses, open brackets, what we want the function to do, and close brackets. And I've highlighted these two sections here so that you can see that these are really the exact same thing. Here we're just passing in a function that was already made. Here we're making the function as we are passing it in. The last thing to know, of course, is that depending upon what you want this function to do, if you did it all on a single line, it could get really long. So normally it's written like this, where you write main function, then the keyword function, open parentheses, close parentheses. If you had any arguments, you could put them in here. Then open brackets. Then you hit enter and write all of your code. Then you finish with the close brackets, parentheses, and semicolon that you see right here. While you're getting used to writing functions this way, I recommend starting like this so you've already typed this out. Sometimes it can be difficult to remember this sequence if you have to do it at the end. But if you do it up here, you can see that each thing has its place. This bracket closes off this bracket. This parentheses closes off this parentheses, and of course the semicolon is what you end the line with. But let's actually jump over to GameMaker and see a couple examples. Okay, so here we are in GameMaker, and up here I'm using the alarm struct again. This is a pretty straightforward struct that just creates an alarm that you can set its alarm event. This is what will fire when the alarm goes off, and you can set it, and you can run it, and you can do a couple other things as well. And so one way to handle these alarms is we could say my alarm equals new alarm struct and then using the dot accessor we could set its default start time and we could set its alarm event and then we could start it running and then over in the step event we could make sure that it runs so this is one way we could do it but the alarm struct also allows you to pass in a default start time and a function and it will assign the default start time to the default start time and the function to the alarm event so we can pass in the default start time up here then we can get rid of this line of code and now we can take this entire function and instead of assigning it to a variable directly, we can put it inside of our alarm struct function. And this will do the exact same thing. This function that we just had will get passed in as a function, will come over here and will be assigned to the alarm event. And now we can do this all in one line of code. We can then call alarm set and we can run it from the step event. One important thing to note, and this is always important to keep in mind when you're declaring functions, is that the scope of this function is still this instance of this object. So even though it's gonna come over here and assign it to the variable alarm event, we are still declaring it inside of this object. So this function will be bound to this object, which means it will run from inside the scope of this object. And so when we reference my alarm, we will want to use the dot accessor still. So this is one use for anonymous functions. You can create structures or other types of things that will take a function when they're created, such as constructor functions for structs. But there's another very useful purpose for these as well, and that is callback functions. A callback function is a function that gets passed into another function as an argument. So over here, I have the function array every. What this function does is it simply loops through an array. So here we have our basic array loop i equals zero, i less than array length, i plus plus, and then it checks whether or not the value in that position of the array meets some criteria, where that criteria is determined by a script. So we can declare an array, we can declare a function is positive, and then we can call the array with the function, where now we'll be checking whether or not every value in the array is positive. But as you might guess, this would create a lot of additional variables that your objects would keep track of, and you might not want to do this. And with anonymous functions, you you can again create and then immediately pass that function in. So instead of declaring the function up here, we can instead get rid of this line of code up here and put it right here. And now this will look a little bit weird and maybe hard to read. And there are different ways you can do this type of syntax, but hopefully you can see if I do control Z that all we've done is we've replaced this variable that used to hold a method with the method itself. 
but let's just run this in the debugger and see it in action. So here we are. We're going to declare our array. You can see it down here. And now we're going to run the function array every against this array and pass in the function to check whether or not all of these values are positive. So we step into that function. We're over here. Here we are at the beginning of our loop. You can see that we passed in the script, but this script doesn't exist in the instances. It only exists in this function. The first value of our array is one. So we will pass one now into our script. We come over here, is number greater than zero? So is one greater than zero? The answer is true. We return true, we'll keep looping through, and we'll keep going. We won't hit any that are false because all of the numbers are greater than zero. So then we will come in and display this debug message. And now I'm just gonna let it run for a second. And here we go. Our hello world alarm has run, and run again, and run again. Hopefully you can see now that these anonymous functions are very useful and actually very easy to use. You're just replacing what would formerly have been a variable that held a function with the function itself. In fact, the most confusing thing about this for me is just learning how to write it. But the value that they provide, in my opinion, is well worth the slight headache that the syntax gives you. So in summary, you can create and pass a function as an argument all at once. And this allows you to create more generic functions that help you create code that is easier to read, understand, and maintain. As always, the links in this slide will be below, as well as the slides themselves and a link to the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.